What is happening everyone? It is your boy Brad here and welcome along to the channel, welcome along to the video and as you can see, there is a big smile on my face. You wanna know why? Because North London is fucking red. Oh yes! Arsenal beat Tottenham on Sunday 2-1. Yes! Unbelievable result. Unbelievable result. Now I know... Most fans will be out there saying you're getting overhyped, this, that, and the other. Spurs are still above you. But it doesn't matter. League position is irrelevant in North London derbies. Because Spurs fans always get above the station saying, oh, we are ruling North London. North London is white, this, that, and the other. Check back on your history before you come and. Um, tell us any different because you see North London is and forever will be red motherfucker it will be red and no doubt about it it will stay forever red Arsenal beat Spurs 2-1 goals from Lacazette and Erdegaard settled the result after a Lamella Rabona in the first half he got sent off in the second half but it all ended good for Arsenal. It ended good. Roll on the Thursday. Let's see what happens then. But my review on the game, well, my reaction to the game was unbelievable performance. From start to finish, you saw it from the opening two minutes. Spurs just sat back, played the low block, trying to hit on the break. You knew it from the first two minutes. Onwards, Mourinho... Borinho playing the same old shitty, diluted, crappy tactics. Oh my god, it was so boring. Literally just watching them sit off, not put any pressure on the goalkeeper. Now listen, what has happened to us over the past two games? Where are we committing mistakes? Oh, I don't know. Oh, let's see. Oh yes, from the goalkeeper position. A pass out has led to a goal in the last two games. And you'd have thought, if Spurs have had any knowledge, if they'd have had any brains between them all, they would have fucked Mourinho's tactics off. They would have gone straight for the jugular, pressed us from the opening minute. But no, they sat back, hit on the break. Did it work? It worked once, that was it. And then in the last 10 minutes, they dominated for a spell. When we were 2 1 up and we were holding on to the lead, but they couldn't get us in. They couldn't break us down. But it was an Arteta masterclass. Fact, end of story. It was an Arteta masterclass. It was wonderful to see. It was wonderful to see. Because Arsenal fans can now go and banter all those Spurs fans who were up raw saying, oh, we're going to kick your ass and all this Gareth Bale, Harry Kane, Human Son talk. It was all talk. Did we see it on the pitch? No. David Luiz and Gabriel will have gone home, entered the pockets, and Harry Kane and Gareth Bale would have still been in there. That was an unbelievable defensive Masterclass by Arsenal. We conceded, yes, from a stupid Rabana when Lamella shouldn't have even been on the pitch, but who cares? He got sent off in the second half, deservedly as well. And on to the incident with the penalty. Everyone says Lacazette kicked Sanchez. The ball had gone. He swiftly missed kicked the ball. And Sanchez was diving in recklessly. And did you expect him to kick him? He did kick him, but it's a penalty. Letter of the law, it's a penalty. He went in recklessly. That's what did him. And even Sanchez himself, he had that look on his face where he was like, yep, yeah, it's a definite pen. This referee got it right for me. Now, I don't care. I've seen it all over the internet. Everyone is slagging off the ref, saying you made the wrong decision. No, not for me. It was a stonewall penalty. No doubt about it. Lacazette slots it in like it's his job. And it's 2-1 to the Arsenal. But in the first half, let's go back to the first half. The first half, utter domination. Right from the start. Right until Spurs scored. They had one shot. One shot all half. One shot. And that was the goal. That is how shit Spurs played. Honestly. 
It was a joke. We could have had about two or three before Spurs managed to find the goal. Smith Rowe hit the bar. We hit the post with Cedric. My God. We could have literally run away with that before even Spurs even had a chance to score. And then, right near half-time, Martin Odegaard with his second goal in an Arsenal shirt after scoring his first in the Europa League on Thursday against the Lippiakos last week. He slots it in to make it one all. And then the second half, it's the same old fucking shit as you saw in the first half. Spurs just sitting off, hitting on the brakes. Kane was anonymous. He was anonymous until like the 85th minute when he hit the post with the free kick. That's the time he came into the game. Louise and Gabriel mark that bitch, that lispy twat off the pitch. And he should have been sent off. He should have been sent off. Why? He went in with the most reckless elbow you will ever see. How is that not being checked by VAR? How has that not gone to VAR? That's my question about that. But hell, let's move on. Let's get into the player rating. Starting goal, Bert Leno. He could have pulled a deck chair up and had a cup of tea. The only thing he had to do was pick the ball out the back of the net. That was it. I'm going to give Leno a 7. He did well. Moving into the right-back position, Cedric Suarez. This is why we need to keep him in the team. Bellerin played well on Thursday against Olympiacos, but Cedric should be first choice. He gets a seven. He was solid. Went forward well, crossed the ball well, did everything he should, did everything it said on the box. It's a seven for me. David Luiz, solid as a rock. Solid as a rock. He had Harry Kane in his pocket, man. Beautiful performance. I'm going to give him a solid 8 for that performance. Gabriel, exactly the same. Solid performance. He was the one that stood out more for me. So I'm going to give him an 8, but he stood out more. Because he ran the defence perfectly. Him and Louise have got a brilliant partnership. The Brazilian combination, that's what we want to see more of. Next on the left, the best... Well, say the best. Everyone had a go at me for this. I say Tierney is one of the best left-backs in the Premier League. He's behind Robertson. Shaw's having a great season. Don't get me wrong. But he's one fucking season. One season and everyone's thinking he's a prime Roberto Carlos. This is exactly the deluded twats that are online right now. Kieran Tierney is a brilliant left-back. He knows what it's all about and I hope... I hope in the future he becomes a permanent Arsenal captain. He knows what it's like to be in big derbies. He's been in the old firm. He's been in the North London derby. He knows exactly how it goes. But Tierney, for me, he's second best to Andy Robertson. But this season, obviously, Robertson's had a dip. So, obviously, Luke Shaw has been the best left back this season. But for me, Kieran Tierney, he's up there with him. No doubt about it. He gets an eight. He was solid. He was putting in balls like it was his job. He was immense. In the midfield we go. Granite Xhaka. Again. I've got to say it. Another solid performance. Put him next to Thomas Partey. You see the difference. You see the difference. He made a mistake on Saturday against Burnley last week. He made a mistake. He owned up to it. He apologised. Obviously, he's got it in his locker to make these silly brain-dead mistakes. But, when he's solid, you've got to praise. When he does something daft, you've got to criticise. That's exactly how I look at it. But, in that game against Spurs, no problems. He was brilliant. Another eight. Amazing. Thomas Partey next to him. He's still a bit rusty. He looked, he looked really shaky, but he was solid. That's exactly what we wanted out of Thomas Partey. He was solid. He broke up the play, played a few of those spray passes. But at the last, say, 10 or 15 minutes, he started to um, tire out a bit because of, obviously, of lack of fitness and match sharpness and shit. But, yeah, fantastic. He was brilliant. I'm going to give him a solid seven. Um, on the right, we're going to go Bukayo Saka. He was, mm, again, he was average. But I think now... He has earned his rest on Thursday. I think he should be rested for the game against Olympiacos. And I would personally 
give Nicola Pepe a run out in that against um, Olympiacos. But Saka gets a six. I'm not going to give anyone below a six. No way. Um, Martin Odegaard. Get this guy in permanently. Look at him. He is something else. He has had probably the best week of a professional footballer's life. He has probably had the single greatest week ever. He got named Norwegian captain the day after he scored that goal against Olympiakos. Now he scores in the North London derby. He is instantly an Arsenal hero. Through and through. Martin Odegaard, he gets an 8 for his performance. Next up, Emil Smith Rowe. Ho, ho, ho. He was my man of the match. He ran the left side. He ran it. He ran. He ran like the road runner. He was absolutely immense. He gets a 9 for his performance. And then, the golden penalty boy, Alexandra Lacazette. He gets an 8. Solid again. Hold up plays brilliant. Link up plays brilliant. The penalty was dispatched with coolness. He is as cool as ice. Six penalties this season. Six penalties scored. Take your hat off. I would not want anyone else taking penalties for Arsenal other than Alex Lacazette. <laughs> if it was a Bamiang, I'd, I'd be confident. But Lacazette on penalties, my God. He's as cool as ice. He shot that thing right into the corner. It was beautiful. Um, substitutes. Nicola Pepe came on at half time. Didn't really impact the game, but I'm going to give him a six. Didn't do anything too bad. And then obviously El Sideways and uh, William came on. No, they didn't have much time to impact the game, so standard fives for them. Um, next up is the manager, the boss, Mikel Arteta. I'm going to give him an eight. That shows you exactly why those brain-dead Arsenal fans that wanted Jose Mourinho... In instead of Arteta. You can all go kiss my ass. Trust the process. Keep it going. Let's see what happens for the remainder of the season. Brad's out now. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do by now. Subscribe to the channel for more content. And until next time, which should be Wednesday, we shall see you later.